Hey guys. Um, so I been pondering and thinking what I'm getting ready to share um, for many days and um, it's been really heavy on my heart and what's been heavy on my heart is that over and over I keep hearing in my in my soul somebody needs to hear this somebody needs to hear this and this morning as I was getting ready um, I heard you need to get this out here somebody needs to hear this and so I was like okay so where this started um, was um, during the middle of the night um, Wednesday night early Saturday or Thursday morning I kept hearing the scripture Romans 8 1 there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and I I would hear it and then I would hear somebody needs to hear this you need to tell somebody this and I would go back to sleep and then a little bit later on I'd wake up and that verse would be in my head there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus somebody needs to hear this again I go to sleep and I thought about it Thursday and I was like okay um, Friday thought about it and then Holy Spirit was laying on my heart I need you to get a video out there somebody needs to hear that there's a therefore no now condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus but they need to hear your story so I've been kind of pondering it and this morning I was like I got to get it out here um, because it's important so I don't know if you're that somebody or if you know somebody that needs to hear this but I'm coming because there's somebody out here and maybe there's multiple somebodies that needs to hear this message. So let me start with, um, for years, um, I dealt with condemnation. And it wasn't over any one thing. Um, it was over multiple things. It was choices that I made as a, a young teenager, um, before I got married, um, and as in high school, um, there was also things when I first got married and um, things that I said to people or the actions that I did or things that I did um, to myself. Um, and I would ask for forgiveness, but I would always um, feel this guilt um, no matter what it was. I was so guilty. I mean, I would, I would come and I would ask God to forgive me. And... Um, then I would come back and again, I would be so guilty of what I had done. Um, and it was multiple things. It wasn't just one thing. And I dealt with this guilt for a long time. Uh, some of it, I dealt with it longer than others, but I'm going to be honest. Some of it I dealt, I mean, there's one situation that I dealt with guilt on this, um, even till probably about four or five years ago. And uh, it was really deep when it came up. I was like, I need to deal, deal with this. And God, in his grace and mercy, through an amazing young man had come up and told me, God wants you to know you're forgiven of what things happened when you were um, a teenager. And um, so I took that on. But where this is coming from is, as I said, uh, through my adult years, many times, I knew what the scripture says. I knew that I was forgiven and I knew that I was saved by grace. But I was so guilty. I was so guilty. And starting about probably 25 years ago, 20, maybe 25, 27 years ago, um, when I was starting to dig in the word, I was fighting this and there was one particular situation and I was reading in Romans and it came to Romans 8 and it said therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and it, it was one of those things that I was like okay I'm in Christ Jesus but I had to battle that so I heard that and I would you know, I would say, okay, I, that's what the word says. 
but it wasn't until probably about 20, after about 20, 22 years ago. And I was like, it came up again. And there was another sweet dear sister that was kind of a prayer warrior with me. And one day she had said to me, she said, um, Jara, because I was telling her where I was at, she says, is that guilt that you are talking about? Or is that, or is, is that the kindness of the Lord? And it's, he's, he's gently reminding you to repent. And so I started questioning that. Is that guilt or is that just um, the Lord gently asking me? And I started realizing that it was guilt and it was from the enemy. The enemy wants to keep us as believers. If he can keep us bound up in our sin, even though we come and we confess it, we confess our past sins and, and we confess those sins that are so ugly, he wants to keep us in the chains of condemnation, that we just are not forgiven, that we are condemned. And that's not what the word says. So what I started doing is um, about 20 years ago, 20, like I said, I wrote out Romans 8, um, Romans 8, 1, and I wrote it out on a card. And I wrote out there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I would have these little cards like this, and I started writing these scriptures out. And when I would feel condemned, I would pick up the scripture and I would, I carried it in my purse. I had it on my mirror. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I would reread it and reread it. What I was doing is I was re, re, rewiring and redoing my mind, renewing my mind of what the enemy had convinced me of. The enemy had convinced me that I was condemned and that I was, that what I did, yep, God forgave me, but don't forget it, Jera. Don't forget what you did. And so I struggled. Oh, how I struggled with that. Then the Lord started laying on my heart, you need to get some other scriptures. Do you believe this? So I found scriptures like, I started thinking about, what does that mean? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And then 17, so that was John 3, 16. Then 17, it says that for God did not send his son and to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And I can remember when I was reading that, I was like, I'd heard it all my life, but God did not send his son into the world to condemn. No, it says not to condemn, not to condemn the world. And as I started building my faith and started Grabbing this word and this sword of what I needed to proclaim, because this was truth. The word of God that was coming forth, that was what was truth. Not the condemnation that I was hearing in my mind, not the condemnation that the enemy was whispering in my ear, that don't forget what you did, Jera. Don't forget that time, Jera. All this condemnation and all of a sudden, the Lord, a Holy Spirit brought up into me. Start thinking. Start thanking me when that condemnation comes. So you know what I started do doing? So that condemnation would come and I would hear it. And first I thought, this is really weird, Jera. But I would say, hey, thank you, devil, for reminding me to be thankful that the word of God says, in Romans 8, 1, that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I know that that is true. And then I would say, thank you for reminding me that Jesus, Jesus' word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever for believeth in him should not, should not perish, but be saved. And for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, no, but so that through the world, word, we might be saved. And then I started, another ones that I started putting in my, my cards that I would read. 
And this one, oh man, it was so powerful when I read this. Psalms 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transitions, transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west. And I can remember when the Lord gave me that. He was like, think about how far that is. Well, think about the east. And then you think about the west. Well, the east is never going to get up to the west because it's always going to be the east, right? And we're always going to be the west. We're always going, no matter which way you're coming. If you if you travel west from the east, you're never going to get to the west because it's always going to be further because you're coming from the east. And then in, it also says in the, um, the Passion Translation, I just recently read this and I thought, this is so good because I love sunrise and sunset, but it just gave me a new vision of this. It says, Father, further than the... Further than the sun, sunrise to the sunset, that's how far you've removed our guilt from us. What I have been dealing with is guilt. I've been dealing with guilt all these years. But when the Lord changed me and the Lord got a hold of me with the word of God and I started proclaiming it and started thanking him that his word was true and saying, hey, thanks for the reminder because the word of God says, and I would speak it. So like I said, someone needs to hear this. Someone needs to hear. Yes, the word says we have fallen short. All of us have. All of us have fallen short, short of the glory of God. But the word also says that those that believe in Jesus Christ, what does it say? We shall be saved. And it also says that when we, when we confess our sins, he is just and will forgive us of our sins. And it also says, and I love this, and this is in, um, let me see, where is that at? It's Romans, um, Romans 2, 4. Listen to this. Kindness of the Lord will lead us to repentance. It is God's kindness to you that he leads you to repentance. And it's also God's kindness that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I just want to encourage you. If you're that person that needs to hear this message. And you've had sin in your life. And you've confessed it. But the enemy just keeps bringing it back up. And you are walking around in guilt. I want you to get out some note cards. I want you to write out some verses. I want to encourage you the first verse to write out. Is Romans 8 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Then I want you to write out Romans 2 4. It is the kindness of the Lord that leads me to repentance. I'm thankful for the kindness of the Lord. And then also write out Psalms 103 12. As far as the east is from the west, that is how far he has removed my transgressions from me and has removed my guilt from me. The, the Passion Bible. I want you to take this up and I want you to swing it and speak it. And then you say, I am so thankful that Geralee Damon, because of Jesus Christ, there is there no now condemnation over Geralee Damon. There's no condemnation because I am in Christ Jesus. You know what? When we start praising God for the reminder that the enemy just gave us of that man, we have fallen short, as the word says. We have sinned. Yep, we've sinned. And I'm not making light of it because it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. And we need to repent. But it's also God's kindness that says that we are not condemned. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Lord, I just want to pray for those and that one person that needs to hear that you do not condemn them. Lord God, I pray that you would stretch out your hand as it says in Acts that you would bring forth your healing of past sin and healing of the condemnation and healing of anything that the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. Holy Spirit, I pray that you come and you minister to that someone 
that needs to hear this message. I pray that you would rise up within them boldness to proclaim the word of God to themselves in front of the mirror and to themselves when they're driving down the road and to themselves when that enemy comes to steal their joy and that enemy comes to remind them that they have fallen. Let them rejoice that because of Jesus, they have been redeemed. And because of Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I love you. I pray that God will show up and minister to you through this word. Because like I said, he keeps telling me, somebody needs to hear this. I hope you're that someone and I hope you receive it. And you walk in the freedom of that your guilt has been removed from sunrise to sunset. Blessings. Love you lots.